This is John T for the Boxing Voice. I'm delighted to be joined on Saturday afternoon by British light, light welterweight contender, Kieran Conway. How are you, Kieran? I'm all good, all good. Everything's um, going nicely and just cracking on as, we, as, as good as we can. Yeah, excellent. So, were you training at the moment? Well, not today, but have you been training at the moment in the gym? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not today. Saturday and rest day. Yeah. Um, every other day, yeah. Two, three times a day. So, um, yeah, cracking on. Excellent. Well, look, you're probably one of the most active fighters in the pandemic, which I'll come on to in a minute, which is really good for you. So you've been out there. Last time out, you were on the huge AJ card um, against Pulev. How was that being on an AJ card? Do you know, it was it was nice. It was a um, good experience to be around all that sort of big hype um, on the fight week, uh, build-ups, everything like that. And um, yeah, the night was, uh, it was a decent night, um, put a good performance on, got the win. Um, so all good there. Yeah. What did you learn from the fight itself? It was another good victory for you. Um, really good against McGowan, who he looked like he, can, he wanted to fight. Yeah. Um, taking away from that fight, uh, I took that on short notice, just like he did. Um, so fair enough to him on that one anyway. Um, but yeah, also took it on short notice. A um, couple of weeks I had to prepare. Uh, I'm taking away from that fight is um, just make sure I'm, always ready so I can uh, take them take them short notice fights if they do come up all the time how was it yeah how was it having a small crowd back appreciate it's not as much as you used to but I think it's the only well the only TV fight in about the last year that's had a crowd I think you had about 2,000 there but that must have been quite special considering the fight before you had none yeah um, because you're so used to you get used to watching the the TV fights without a crowd and you I was even part of it at a fight camp um, it, it actually felt a little bit weird to have people there. I was like, well, this is a bit different, isn't it? It felt like a new experience again. It was strange. Strange, strange feeling that was. Yeah, I bet. And how was, we haven't had you on since the fight camp. How was it actually in Eddie's garden? That must have been quite an experience as well. Very different setting from what you used to. Yeah, it was really good. Um, the whole fight week was different. Uh, like we were all there in the bubble and everything. I liked it. I think that the boxing should be like that all the time. Um and uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed that week as well. He puts on a good show, right? I mean, he always does that anyway. But I must admit, when he first came out and said, I'm going to have a few fights in my garden. And I've seen his house and how big it is, you know, where the estate is, if you call it. And I thought, well, actually, how's it going to go? But as usual, there was a load of razzmatazz with the fireworks and that. It still looked really good. Yeah, it felt really good to be there, to be honest. Still really good setup. Uh, felt like just, just um, being in a normal venue, to be honest. Just with no people there. And yeah. being outside. Good stuff. Right, well, look, let's move forward now. So your last, I think you've won the last three or four since your draw with Ted Cheeseman. I'm going to come on to Ted in a minute. When can we expect you out? Have you got any news yet? I was half hoping you'd be on one of these cards that he's got out now, but I guess he's got so many fighters, he's got to give them all a chance, right? Uh, yeah, I, I, I believe I was um, due to box in about April on one of those sort of shows. Got got an injury that I've got to sort out. Um, no, no hiding that there. Um, so we'll get that sorted and then we'll move on with um, getting another date and uh, pushing on with my career. Any idea when that might be? How long are you saying you're out injured at the moment or have you got a date you yeah. might be back? Uh, just getting this sorted, to be honest. I think I'll be back soon. Not It won't be too long. Um, maybe May, June, something like that. Um, but nothing set in stone yet. Perfect, mate. Any ideas who you'll be looking for as a fight there? Uh, you know what? I don't actually know. Um, obviously, I've got the WBA Intercontinent also. We've got that there, and I want to add to that. This year, I want to add to that. Um, I want to make it a collection, um, keep building, keep building my career and my name, and um, just chipping away. And I can uh, see it. Nice if, you, if you move your head, I think, right slightly, I think I can see it in the background. Is it there? No, the other way. Yeah, there. Yes. <laughs> Looks like. Where are you? In your bedroom? No, this is, this is actually the living room. That's in the corner of the of the living room quality I was going to say so you can see it more often in the daytime in the living room looks good mate um, no, very cool. very impressive well look I did mention Ted Cheeseman um, that was when you fought for the British title it's the first time that you fought for the British title and the same for Ted it was a great scrap on the night and it was a draw um, is that a fight that would interest you to sort of like get that rematch yeah of course it's no secret um, if that fight was a possibility I'd jump at it Um I believe I won on the night. I believe I win comfortably again. Um, 
and I think I'll do a better job this time. Like I'm, I'm a year down the line. I've had a lot of experience since that. Um, I've turned. I'm a different guy now. Like I'm bigger, stronger, faster, fitter, and experienced at the long rounds. Um, it'll be a totally different fight, but I don't know if it'll happen. For 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 Ted's uh, side of things, I don't think it will happen definitely anytime soon. But I'm open to it all the time. Is that because you think he doesn't want the fight? Yeah, he says that he's basically he tries to um, push me down a little bit. He thinks he's above me. Don't see how he can say that. He asked me. He asks the question, "What do I bring to the table?" Unsure how that can be even be in his head. Um, because since since box me, yeah, he beat Sam Eggington, but th- this doesn't mean that he's above me. Um, we've got a similar level title. He's now again boxing for the British title. That's where we were a year ago. He's not moving on. So I boxed him last year, same level. He's still there. So we've we've got to get that behind us. I think. I think we need to get that fight done and uh, push it behind us. Yeah, look, if he has said that, no, we're completely unbiased, by the way. That's our job. And we had Ted on this week and I had JJ Metcalf a couple of weeks ago, which I'll come on to him in a second. But if you're looking at records and not just saying it because you're the person I'm speaking to, in terms of your development and progression over the last year to 18, I know there's a lot of experts in the field that I speak to that think you're one of the most improved boxers out there. And that's not just my opinion. That's true um, from a lot of people. The other thing is, if you're looking at stats, I think you're 16 one 16 wins one defeat and one draw and Ted is 16 wins two defeat and one draw you don't get pretty much any more level uh, identical you drew for the British title which then brings me on to um, obviously in two three weeks on the uh, Dillian White undercard against Povetkin it's JJ Metcalf against Ted Cheeseman who do you think wins that one Kieran and why it's, it's very 50-50 that fight um James Metcalf, I haven't seen too much of him. And I I don't know, but I believe he's been fairly inactive compared to a lot of us anyway, um, especially in recent times. Um, maybe that'll play a big part. Ted's been active. Um, so I'd pro- if I had to push towards anyone, it'd probably be Ted. He's, he's young, he's active, he wants it. Um, I'd probably say Ted Cheeksman wins that. Okay. And, and in, in terms of him not wanting to fight you, um, do you think it's hard for him to avoid you because of the draw, because of the similar record? Should he beat Metcalf? Do you think, and you're both with the same promoter, so from that point, it's easy. But do you think Eddie can then almost say, well, you know, he's there, he's banging on the door. They can't say no to you if your record's the same and, and that's the shot you've got. And you've got that belt behind you as well, which shows the level you're at. Yeah, um, it is easy fights, mate. But... I, like, I, think, I truly think that Ted just believes that he, uh, I don't deserve the fight. I don't, I don't see why, like I said. Um, but like I said, the, it could be offered to me tomorrow. I'll take it because we've got history and we need to put it behind us, in my opinion. But maybe we won't make it one day and we make it a really big fight. Like I said, there's history there and uh, it can be well promoted. Yeah, well, hopefully for the fans, it does get made sooner rather than later. But you're right, if it builds up a little bit and you keep winning, it is still a grudge match and it could even be a bigger fight. And Eddie knows what he's doing there. Now, look, if that fight doesn't get made and it is Cheeseman that wins, who who else, like, domestically, do you think? Because the domestic scene is stacked with quality that I'd argue there's four or five of you that could argue you're on the fringe world level almost anyway. Who else would you maybe look at domestically? There's Hamza Shiraz out there. There's Fowler. Would any of them fights... Yeah, I'm open to all offers. If it's if it's the right fight at the right time for me, then um, we'll get it done. Um, obviously, I've got my team to look after that. MTK, Matchroom, my every everyone in my team. We all all get together and we we chat about it. See what moves are right for me, um, and that's that's the main thing. I don't need to focus on um, making the right moves for other people. Think about my career and um, what steps are best. Excellent stuff. And while we're at your weight, then I know you're not quite at world level just yet, and I'm sure you'll get there. Who do you think the top dog is at 154 pounds? Yeah, you know, I don't know. I've been so focused on um, this sort of level for so long now. Um, the domestic scene, 
I don't even know who's holding the t- world titles. At it looks like on paper, Jamel Charlo, I think he's got two or three of them. I think he's 34 wins and one defeat. So it was kind of a bit of a silly question, I thought. But um, I just wondered if you thought there was anyone else out there. But that, that that's cool. Look, one last thing before I do let you go. There's a big fight card tonight. I appreciate it's not at your weight, although they're not far away. So it could be that one of these fighters, maybe as they go on, step up weight and be at the same weight. Who's going to win that tonight? That is a fantastic 50-50 for me between David Avenesian and Josh Kelly. Uh, I've done a bit of sparring with both of them. Not too much, but I've done a bit with both. Um uh, they're both at, di- at this at this time as well. They were both at different points in their camps and everything, such as. Um, but with that in mind, I'd probably sway towards um, Josh Kelly getting the win tonight. Um, but that takes nothing away from David. He's a very good fight and he's dangerous as well, both hands. And um, it's a really exciting fight. I'm looking forward to it. I've been all set up, ready for it, waiting for it. And it's a good, good show for, for boxing people. And um, general public, it's a good fight. Mm, I think the whole card tonight looks good, to be fair. There's some 50-50 scraps on there, two or three of them. That one in particular, the noise around from the experts is that Avenesian carries power in both hands, as you mentioned. He likes to tear up and come forward. Josh Telly, uh, Josh Kelly slicks uh, style, if you like. The styles make fights. And let's yeah. see what level Josh is at, maybe. If he can do that for 12 rounds and hold him off and then get the win, that would be really good for him. And there would be rumours, a lot of people feel that maybe Josh would step up at some stage in weight. Might not find it easy at 147 and that would be a fight you would like I take it with Josh yeah it'd be, it'd be an honour to share the ring with Josh good fighter been been around the block um, and uh, he did a lot as an amateur he's done a lot as a pro great Olympian I, anything if it's the right fight at the right time yeah good stuff alright well look thanks for taking time out to chat to us Kieran especially on a Saturday afternoon really appreciate it I hope the recovery from the injury isn't too bad I wasn't sure there was one and hopefully we'll see you back in that ring soon mate yep we'll be soon not All too best. long. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thanks very much. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the patreon.com backslash the boxing voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, from title, betting shows, the list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.